In the previous video, we worked with symmetric matrices. Uh, they had the special property that if you have a matrix and then you take its transpose, you end up with the original matrix that you began with. So you have that symmetry. So these are symmetric matrices. Uh, and we proved in the last video that for symmetric matrices, all their eigenvalues are real. They have no complex eigenvalues. So that's one of their sterling qualities. In this video, we want to take a look at the properties of the eigenvectors of symmetric matrices. Uh, reminder that the playlist for all the videos is at the website, digital-university.org. Also remember now, when we're multiplying two matrices together, we have their product. Then we take the transpose of that product. That's the same as reversing the order of the multiplication and taking the transpose of each individual matrix. We will use this fact um, later on here in our video presentation. So we have here a matrix that is symmetrical. And I think it was in video number 23, we proved that for any matrix, when you have distinct eigenvalues, that their corresponding eigenvectors are linearly independent. Well, if we have a symmetric matrix with distinct eigenvalues, property number one, they're all going to be real, no complex eigenvalues to deal with. The second property that the symmetric matrix has is the eigenvectors that correspond to unique eigenvalues or distinct eigenvalues, they not only are linearly independent, but they're also mutually orthogonal to each other. And that's what we want to prove in this video. So let's say that we have a symmetric matrix A, and we're dealing with one of its um, eigenvectors, say Q1. And I'm not going to write the bar above the vectors here. It gets too messy, but these are vectors here, specifically eigenvectors. So this is lambda 1, Q1. And let's say we also have another eigenvector, Q2. So A times Q2 will equal lambda 2 times Q2. Now, for A times Q2, We're going to multiply both sides of this equation by Q1 transpose. Now Q1, of course, is a column vector. It might have components like this. That's Q1. Q1 transpose is just going to be a row vector. And when you multiply a matrix by a row vector, you multiply it on the left by the row vector. We demonstrated that in um, videos 7a and 7b. So we're going to multiply on the left by Q1 transpose. And that will equal, on this side of the equation, Q1 transpose lambda 2 times Q2. This is just a number. For semantic matrices, it's always going to be a real number, but it's just a number, so we can write it over here. So we have this equation, and this is just taking the inner product then of two vectors. We would have Q1 in row form with its components, and Q2 like this, 
and the just x1, y1 plus x2, y2 plus x3, y3. So this is just taking the inner product of two vectors. And let's write this over here. Okay, let's um, go back to this expression. We have Q1 transpose times A times Q2. Now here, we're going to use the symmetric properties. We could say, well, we could write this as Q1 transpose times A transpose times Q2. And why can we do that? Because A equals A transpose. Then here, let's rearrange the parentheses so that it's like this. Then this, what we have is two transposes multiplied together. Remember what that equals. That will be A, matrix A, times Q1 transpose. Remember, when you're taking the transpose of a product, you reverse the order and then take the transpose of each one individually. And that's what we have written right here. So we have this is equal to this. We have this equation. Now, let's see what else we have. Up on the top, for Q transpose A, Q, 2, we also had this expression right here. So what do we have so far? Well, let's just back up a step here. Here we have A, Q, 1 transpose. But A times Q1 is also just lambda 1, Q1 transpose. Of course, this is just a number. So this is just lambda 1, Q1 transpose times Q2. And what does that equal? It equals Q1 transpose A Q2. So we have this equation involving Q1 transpose A Q2. But at the top of the page, we had this equation involving Q1 transpose A, Q2. And here we had, well, it's equal to this quantity, Q2, Q1 transpose, Q2. Now down here we're saying, no, it equals this. So what we have then is that this expression here equals this expression here. So let's write it out like that. We have Q1, or lambda 1, Q1 transpose times Q2 equals right here, lambda 2, Q1 transpose Q2. Okay, and again, let's just review this quickly. The way that we obtained this equation right here goes back to this step. 
right here is where we use the fact that A equals A transpose. was right here in this equation. Then once we had it in this form, we can put the parentheses like this, with now it's A Q1 transpose. And again, the reason why it's like that is when you have a matrix product, you're taking its transpose, it's equal to the reverse order of the matrices each time it's individual transpose. So going backwards, this right here, or this right here, would be Q1 transpose times A transpose. So this and this are the same, but now here then, this is an eigenvector, such as lambda 1, Q1, transpose. This is just a number, so there's no transpose for it, so we just have in here, this is times Q2, we should put our Q2 in here, like this. So here we have lambda 1, Q1 transpose times Q2 equals this. But then up here, we had this expression, leading us then to conclude that lambda 2 times this inner product equals lambda 1 times this inner product, which we have written right here. Then we can write it like this, lambda 1 minus lambda 2 times Q1 transpose Q2 equals 0. Just bringing this over here and subtracting, and then factoring out this. But these are not equal. These are distinct eigenvalues. So the only way this can be 0 is if this inner product is 0, or in other words, Q1 and Q2 have to be orthogonal. So this then shows us that for any pair of eigenvectors belonging to distinct eigenvalues of a symmetric matrix, that not only are the eigenvectors linearly independent, but they're also orthogonal. So that's another special property that symmetric matrices have. We're guaranteed all their eigenvalues are real, and all the associated eigenvectors are not just linearly independent, but they are also orthogonal.